great. <laughs> I was just playing around with my Viewmaster. Did you ever have one of these? I had one of these when I was a kid and I used to love looking through them. The pictures give you this sort of true 3D perspective, similar to a 3D movie. Everything is so real in here. You know, it's almost like you could reach out and touch the characters in there. Oh! You could touch them in virtual reality, David. Ben, you startled me. I didn't hear you come in. This is Ben Delaney, editor of the Cyber Edge Journal. I invited Ben to come over and explain the new computer-generated worlds called virtual reality. All right, Ben, what exactly is virtual reality? Well, virtual reality is a world that, as you said, exists only in the computer. It's three-dimensional, and it's interactive. Okay, it's in the computer. Now, does that mean we can use just our standard desktop computers to accomplish that? Sure can. As a matter of fact, I installed some software last night. Take a look at this. We've got a virtual office here, and you can roll around in it. Use the joystick to move around. All right, just take a walking tour of the... Whoa, look at that. Yeah, you can go anywhere you want. You could even go outside and look back in if you wanted Close to. Close up of the plant and go back around to the couch. That's great. You see what people have hung up in their cubicles? <laughs> now, Ben, how does a programmer get that kind of detail into a computer program? In other words, I could walk anywhere in this office, right? Yeah, you could. It's, it's what we call object-oriented programming and 3D modeling. Okay, 3D modeling means we have a three-dimensional perspective. Exactly. Object-oriented programming, how's that work? Well, the way that works is that every object, such as a couch or a chair, is described in terms of its characteristics. For example, if you wanted to have a mug like this in there, mm -hmm. you would not only describe its what we call geometry, its shape, but you'd also describe characteristics like hardness, the fact that you can move it, the fact that it holds things. All that information is in the computer program? Yes, for every object you see in there. We would have to do that with every object in my office? Well, somebody had to build every one of them to begin Whoa, with. Not an easy task. <laughs> not at all. <laughs> all right, now, brings to mind, though, another thing. When I look through the Viewmaster, I get this very real, I'm there kind of feeling because of that 3D. And we're not getting a true 3D image here, are we? Right, that's because this is what we call a through-the-window system. In other words, the monitor of the computer actually acts as a window on the virtual world. But there are other systems that use more advanced equipment that give you the full three-dimensional view. I've got one downstairs. Come on and take a look. Okay. okay, David. Now, in order to understand how the computer does 3D, we have to understand how people see in stereo. Okay, well, we see stereo because we have two eyes, right? Right, and because our eyes are separated, they each see a slightly different scene. Sure and enough, that gives us depth perception. The perspective is just a little bit different, isn't it? Now, there's been a lot of attempts to replicate that. One of the earlier ones was this stereoscope. All right. This uses two slightly different images on this card. Okay, two photographs, just a little bit different, but we look at them through the viewfinder and they sort of fuse into one. Right, and give the illusion of 3D. This is an ancestor of the Viewmaster, right? Right, and your Viewmaster works basically the same way with the images in pairs. Okay, so once we bring those two images together, we get depth perception. Exactly. Now let's see how the computer does it. This is a high-powered workstation, and it's displaying a stereoscopic or 3D image. All right, it's a jet airplane, I guess, but it looks like there's just multiple images, so it's kind of fuzzy. Right, that's because you need special glasses, just ah, like at the movies. Special glasses. Now, these aren't red and green like the ones at the movies. These use what are called liquid crystal shutters, which blank out each eye alternately. Well, just like we were doing. Exactly. But, but very fast, probably. Very fast, and then the computer displays the right and left image at the same speed as the glasses. Can I try these on? Yeah, check it out. Oh, look at that jet, it's great. Look out, Ben, it's coming right at you. <laughs> All right. <laughs> then if I get down here, I can see underneath it and on top. Now, how does the computer know which angle I'm actually looking at the jet? Well, what we've done is actually replace the joystick on the computer upstairs with your head. <laughs> These little devices on the glasses are ultrasonic transmitters that send out a tone that we can't hear, but the receivers up here on this triangular device pick them up, calculate the difference in time it takes for the signals to get to each of the three receivers. So that's how it knows that I'm moving around? Exactly. That's amazing. So I get some choice here, some interactive choice in what image I Absolutely. want. Absolutely. That's great. Now, even though we're getting this wonderful 3D image, Ben, I still want to be sort of inside the computer screen somewhere. I want to actually pilot the jet. Is well, there a way to do that? Well, we'll get you inside. That requires <laughs> what we call a head-mounted display. We've got one on the Cybertron. I think you're going to like this. Come on. 
Oh, Ben, you didn't tell me I was gonna have to crawl and get strapped into something here. I think you'll like this. This gyroscope-looking thing is called a Cybertron. It does remind me of a gyroscope. It really moves, too. Yeah, it's a motion platform. This is gonna let you feel the virtual world. So every motion I make is sort of incorporated into... You got it. ...the computer program. And when you put on this head-mounted display, you're gonna see everything the same way. Let me show you how this works. Glorified bike helmet here. Right. <laughs> We've got two small color TVs, flat screen in here, one for each eye and the optics that make the image look like it's further away. So this is an electronic 3D image that we're going to project. You've got okay. it. And then we've got the stereo headphones. Surround the sound. sound. Uh -huh. Then on top here, we've got a magnetic tracker. Just like the ultrasonic tracker on the other system, this tells the computer where you're looking and where your head is while you're in the virtual world. So not only are my head motion is recorded, but the whole body is as well. So I yeah. just put it on here? No, first we're going to strap you in. Okay, get in the cage first. Then you're going to be able to fly that jet that we saw in that other system. Now, I have a round-trip ticket, right? Yeah, we'll get you back. <laughs> get that seat belt in. All right, Ben, I'm strapped in, ready Here's to go. Your helmet. On with the helmet. We tighten it up a little. Comfortable? Uh, yeah, I guess so. I'm ready for virtual reality. Have a good flight. Thank you. Look out for them. I hope they know where they're going. Yeah, you are right in the middle. In fact, you're almost floating. I guess that's what they mean by, like, full immersion, huh? And you're, you're right in the middle of all the action. Well, I guess it's over, Ben. How do I get back to Earth here? Here, well, let me give you a hand. Okay. First, we take off the helmet. Okay. Helmet first. Then the safety strap here. And then I try to uh, step out onto the solid Earth. <laughs> That is amazing technology. Isn't that wow. fun? Now, is it all used just in entertainment at this point, or is there a practical use to well, virtual reality? There's actually some really good uses for it. One of my favorites is what's called wheelchair VR. It uses a wheelchair to roll through a virtual world. This lets you test an apartment or an office building. Before it's built, actually. Exactly. Model it on the computer. And then if you can get through it in the computer, once it's built, someone in a wheelchair will be able to go through it, too. That's I think great. that's a really yeah. good use. How about the distant future? I mean, way down there, what's the ideal that we're after? What we're going to see is that the computers, the head mounts, the tracking systems will all get smaller and faster and better until it all virtually disappears. As a matter of fact, in the distant future, you might not be able to tell the difference between virtual reality and reality. Ben? Ben? I guess I'm having a little trouble telling the difference myself right now. But don't you go away. We'll be right back, I think. Hey, Ben, where did you go? How could, how could everything disappear that fast? It's amazing. Ben! Hey, Ben! 